from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. And it says, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. And inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was Bethesda Pool, with five covered platforms or porches surrounding it. Crowds of sick folks, blind, lame, or with paralyzed limbs, lay on the platforms waiting for a certain movement of the water. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water. And the first person to step down into it afterwards was healed. One of them was a man who had been lying there sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, he asked him, Would you like to get well? I can't, the sick man said, for I have no one to help me into the pool at the movement of the water. And while I am still trying to get there, someone else always gets in ahead of me. And Jesus told him, Stand up, roll up your sleeping mat, and go on home. And instantly the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hebrews 12.2 tells us, Keep your eyes upon Jesus, for he is the author and finisher of the race. But too often our eyes are pulled away from what we should be focusing on. Too often our minds start to wander. And then so does our eyes. We start to glance around us at other things and then we lose our concentration and we lose our focus. Our eyes should be considered, are considered windows into our souls. What we look at, what we watch on TV, and even what we read affects us spiritually to a greater degree than what we would think. They can cause us to stray away from God. Our eyes can cause us to lust after things that we shouldn't. We can often tell what a person is like spiritually, even just by looking into their eyes. When we look at other people, we try to look them in the eye and make eye contact with them. That's because eyes tell us so much about that person. The eyes can reflect the goodness and grace of God, but they can also reflect the anger and the hatred that is often hidden in the heart. Too often the eyes also reflect pain and the heartache of what that person has went through. The eyes see the things of this world and they begin to lust after those desires. And then they become embedded in our fickle human hearts. Our eyes are drawn to the earthly and to the carnal instead of the heavenly and the spiritual aspects of God and of life that we should actually be focused on. That's why we should not be looking around us at much of the things that we see in this world, but instead keep our eyes upon Jesus, just as the author of Hebrews had told us to. But with so much sensory overload in our world today, it is hard to stay focused on the task ahead. You see, it's easy to become focused on the things around us to the point that we actually miss Jesus. We just no longer look for him. And so when he appears, we don't even notice any, any more that he's even there. That's what has happened in our story today. Like us, this man became focused on something other than Jesus. We have to concentrate on staying focused at all times or we too will miss so many of the God moments that are happening all around us. So where is our focus today? Have we become so fixated on something to the point that we have totally missed what was happening around us? So focused, in fact, that we didn't even see what was right in front of us? Often we become so extremely fixated on the things of this world that we lose our focus on Jesus, whether it be for our healing or even just for our guidance in this life. In our passage today, it tells us that in the town of Jerusalem there was a pool called the Pool of Bethesda, near the temple 
And it is said that an angel would come to that pool and stir the water. And whoever entered into the pool first, after the water was stirred, would have whatever affliction um, they were suffering healed. Now because of this, there were many sick people that you can imagine and crippled people all gathered around this pool, each waiting on the angel to stir the water. And among them was this man from our story who had, who we can assume was crippled in his feet and his ankles, for we are told that he cannot walk. This man had been brought to the pool just, as, just the same as the other people had uh, in the hopes of finding some healing. But the problem was not that this man was there for his healing, but that he had been there for possibly 38 years. You see, for 38 years, day and night, he had lain in the same spot, watching for the angel to come and stir the water. 38 years of watching each time as another person would slip into the pool before he could get there. 38 years of telling himself that maybe, just maybe, tomorrow would be the day. 38 years of living with the fear knowing that chances were tomorrow would not be the day. We can assume that because he was crippled, that he was unable to walk to get himself to the pool, and so he needed help, help that was no longer available to him. And we can assume, because he had no one to help him into the pool, that he had been carried there originally, maybe by friends or family, but that they had long since abandoned him. Now, whether he had a congenital abnormality that he had been born with or whether he had been the victim of an accident, it doesn't really matter. The fact remains that he was a cripple and he could not walk and that he had no one to help him. You know, we too often find ourselves crippled in life. Sometimes we find ourselves there by our own bad choices, by such things as drugs or alcohol or something else maybe that we have done that has crippled our walk through life. Maybe we have crippled, been crippled not by the things that we have done, but maybe by the things that have been done to us. You know, life is hard, and sometimes it can deal us some very painful and powerful blows. Maybe we have been abused. Maybe we have been neglected. Maybe we grew up in an unhealthy environment. Maybe we were given a bad health diagnosis. Maybe we lost our job. Maybe our spouse walked out on us. What kind of massive blow have you been delivered? Have you been dealt a massive blow that has crippled your spiritual and maybe even your physical walk? A blow that knocked you off your feet and crippled you to the point where you just weren't sure that you could get back up. A blow that injured you and you have just lain there, wherever it was that you fell, suffering and in too much heartache and pain to get back up. You know, we, we all have things that have hit us like a brick. Things that have hurt us, things that have broken us, Things that have made us want to just curl up and not move for the pain was so bad. Maybe a death, a divorce, a betrayal. The list is endless. But whatever it is that has crippled us, we can find that we just can't move from where it was that we have fallen. We have trouble getting back up and we have trouble moving forward in life. And we become stuck right where we have fallen, and there we lay, maybe for years, maybe for a lifetime. Let's face it, the world that we live in is broken, and we are surrounded by pain, and sometimes we break under the strain of it all, and we lay there crippled and unable to move. This man thought that the pool was his answer for healing. He was so convinced of this that he had lain next to it for 38 years, staring straight ahead and focused on that same pool day after day after day. 
never taking his eyes off of the water. Every moment when he was awake, he was waiting and watching for the slightest ripple on the surface. What have we been focusing on for our healing? What have we been staring at day after day after day thinking will help us? What have we convinced ourselves that we need in order to help us get healing and wholeness? This man was sure that his healing and his wholeness could only come from this pool. And so he was willing to lay there for 38 years. Can you imagine? 38 years. That's 13,870 days. Every one of them exactly the same. Every one of them found him laying there staring at the water waiting for the slightest ripple, waiting for his chance to move, trying to gather the strength to move and finding each time that he was unable to. Then, one day, as he's laying there, watching the pool, Jesus and the disciples come along, and as they walk past the pool, Jesus sees this man. And Jesus walks up beside where he lays, and I can only imagine Jesus kneeling down beside him, beside where this man has lain. And I can imagine that the man is so focused on the water that maybe he doesn't even acknowledge Jesus as he approaches. For, you see, if he turns his eyes to look at Jesus, he may miss the movement of the water yet again. And then Jesus speaks to him and says, do you want to be healed? Now, have you ever been so focused and concentrating on something and you just don't hear that somebody is talking to you? I can truly picture that happening here. Maybe the man doesn't even hear Jesus the first time because he is so intent on concentrating on the water. And then Jesus asks again, do you want to be healed? Maybe slowly, even reluctantly, maybe this man finally looks away from the pool. Maybe just quickly for just a second, he shifts his eyes to Jesus, but then immediately back to the water, and he finally answers and says, I have no one to help me into the pool. And until I get there, someone else has already gotten there before me. Isn't it ironic that often Jesus is standing right beside us and he is asking if we want to be healed, and our only response is, I have no one to help me. We tell Jesus, the creator of the universe, the great physician, the healer of our brokenness, that we want to be healed, but there is no one to help us. No one to help us when we have Jesus standing right next to us, waiting for us to turn and look at him, waiting for us to acknowledge his presence with us waiting for us to see his willingness and his compassion to help us and to heal us, waiting for us to take our focus off of the things of this world and instead turn our focus on the one who made the world. For 38 years, this man believed that this pool was his only answer. For 38 years, his focus was on this one solution, and he was trying to accomplish it on his own strength. And now, even with Jesus beside him, this man still cannot take his eyes off of the pool. I ask you again, where is our focus today? Where have we been looking for the answers to our healing? And for how many years are we willing to go ahead and keep struggling alone? How many years, like this man, are we willing to lay in our brokenness? For years? For 38 years? For a lifetime? Are there years when maybe you have lain awake at night hoping for a sign, maybe even just a small ripple of something to let you know 
that whatever your situation is, it was starting to change, only to realize that it can never change on your strength alone. How long have you cried yourself to sleep with the thoughts that maybe, maybe tomorrow would be different? And the deep down fear of knowing that it probably would not be any different. You see, this man could not change his situation, and so often neither can we. How long does Jesus have to stand beside us until we acknowledge him? How many times does he have to ask us, do you want to be healed? Before we are willing to take our eyes off of our own impossible solution and look to him. When will we finally turn our heads and look to the only possible solution for our pain and for our brokenness? The only one who can heal us in our crippled state. The only one who has the ability to make us whole again. Jesus. He is our solution. The things of this world can never heal us. We need to turn to the one who created the world. The one who made everything out of nothing. He's waiting. Just like with this man at the pool, Jesus is waiting for us to realize that he is with us. He is waiting for us to answer his question. Do you want to be healed? He is waiting for us to turn our focus on him. But first we have to answer the question that Jesus is asking us. Do you want to be healed? Do we? Unfortunately, some people really don't want to be healed. They want to remain at the pool. They're comfortable there. The surroundings are familiar to them. The other people at the pool know them. And even though they say they want to be healed, they can come up with a lot of excuses as to why they need to stay right there where they are. Why? Because change is uncomfortable. Changing our focus takes effort on our part. It can be hard to give up what we think we need instead of what Jesus thinks we need. And besides that, change is also very scary. Are we willing to take the chance? Do we really want to be healed? Physically, emotionally, spiritually. This story has a happy ending, and ours can too, because Jesus healed this crippled man. After 38 years, he stood up on his own feet and walked into the temple to praise God. And our story says that his feet and his ankles became normal, and he stood and he picked up his mat. After 38 years, he got up. And he walked away from the pool, and he never looked back. After 38 years, he was healed, and we can be too. After 38 years of lying there day after day, his life changed when he encountered Jesus. You see, when we encounter Jesus and we are willing to turn to him, our walk can be restored also. We can follow this man's example. We can stand, and we can follow Jesus, and we can be healed but we can only stand and follow him if we are willing to take our eyes off of the pool. We need to stop looking at our own solutions because they just don't work. We think that maybe another job, more money, a different spouse, better children can fix us, but they can't. The only thing that can fix us is Jesus. We need to say yes to Jesus and be willing to turn our focus on him when he asks us, do we want to be healed? So if you are struggling today with a physical issue, an emotional issue, a spiritual issue that just does not seem to want to go away, maybe it's because you are focused on your own solution instead of on Jesus. Jesus is asking, do you want to be healed? And we need to ask ourselves truthfully, do we really want to be healed? And if the answer is yes, then let's change our focus to the only one that can help us. 
take our eyes off of the pool and where we have lain there because we have been there long enough. And it is time to get up and to put our focus on where Jesus is and where he is going, and we need to follow. Amen. Let us pray.